Stan Jabalisco here. I would like to explain a concept found in my book Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics. Before me I have the fifth edition, that's edition number five, but I believe this material appears in pretty much all editions of the book. In, in the fifth edition it's dealt with in chapter 25 uh, in wireless transmitters and receivers, the, tr the chapter on wireless transmitters and receivers. This uh, particular topic is known as diversity reception and I'd like to explain just a little bit about how that works. In this particular example I have uh, lifted figure 25-16 from the fifth edition of Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics and embellished it a little bit uh, to illustrate the principle. This is known as dual diversity reception, D-U-A-L, uh, two signals, meaning dual diversity, come into different antennas spaced approximately five to ten wavelengths apart. Now that can be a significant distance, particularly at the frequencies where diversity reception is most commonly used, which is in the high frequencies, uh, 3 to 30 megahertz, also known as the short wave bands, although that's somewhat of a misnomer these days because the waves are not particularly short. For example, at 10 megahertz, uh, a wavelength in free space is approximately equal to 30 meters or around 100 feet. So if you're talking 5 to 10 wavelengths, you're talking 150 to 300 meters. Uh, and if you want to deal with that in feet, that's about 500 to 1,000 feet. That is quite a long distance that you have to put these two antennas apart from each other in order to take advantage of diversity reception. Well, what exactly uh, happens here? The waves from a single broadcast station, let's just say 10 megahertz, the uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology Transmissions, uh, WWV, Time and Frequency Standard, transmits on 10 megahertz. It's a well-known marker. Let's just say here are the waves coming in. They are 30 meters long. That means one cycle, one full cycle, say from positive peak to positive peak, 30 meters or about 100 feet coming into this antenna and coming into that antenna. The situation, however, is that because these antennas are significantly far away from each other, these two signals take slightly different paths through space. Significantly, slightly but significantly different paths through space to reach these two antennas. So if one of these signals happens to undergo a sharp fade because of ionospheric fading effects, phasing fading, um, if that happens to one of these waves, chances are it's not going to happen to the other one. So you get a little bit more uh, assurance that you're going to be able to continuously hear this signal. If one of them fades, chances are the other one will not fade at the same time. So otherwise, these two antennas proceed then down. One signal goes down through this receiver and gets to the audio amplifier. The other signal comes down through an identical receiver but entirely redundant and reaches the same audio amplifier where the uh, signals are then combined in a special mixing circuit, something like an audio mixer uh, that you might find in high fidelity equipment but a little bit more sophisticated because it has to be uh, in the radio frequency portion of the spectrum. That is combined, then the resulting audio, or if you want to send it to some kind of a digital device like a printer or a display, uh, whatever uh, demodulation uh, you use to get whatever kind of 
signal output here that's usable results in a single signal and, and the two uh, incoming signals are carefully combined so that they don't fight with each other. Rather, they complement each other or supplement each other to form a more robust signal than you could get with just one receiver at a time. The key is that this distance needs to be significant, at least 5 to 10 wavelengths. And if you can get it more than that, so much the better. Now there is another form of diversity reception besides this spatial diversity reception. What we are showing here is spatial diversity reception. You can also use frequency diversity. What does that mean? Well in that case you still have two different radios, two different antennas. They do not necessarily have to be separated by such a distance as this. But one of the waves is at a slightly different frequency than the other one. Well, not just slightly, maybe significantly different. Say instead of 10 megahertz, this one were now 12 and a half megahertz. This one's still 10 megahertz. Once again, chances are that if you can hear one signal, of course, if you hear one signal, you're going to get enough to, to use that signal in order to derive your useful operations, whatever that may be. But chances are that if the signal at one frequency fades, say at 10 megahertz, the signal at the uh, other frequency, in this case maybe 12 and a half megahertz. Okay. 12.5 megahertz. There we go again. That Corel program is a wonderful graphics program, but I forgot to set the uh, text function to keep the characters in the case that I want them to stay in. There's a write assist or type assist function. Some of these programs are just maybe just a wee bit too smart. They do some things for you and that's great. Sometimes though you have to you have to opt out of them. 10 megahertz here, 12 and a half megahertz there. As long as we know what this means, uh, the technical capitalization details are not going to matter so much. But you should uh, remember that technically this H should be capitalized. Megahertz, 12.5 megahertz, a slightly shorter wavelength than 30 meters. 10 megahertz, a wavelength of 30 meters in free space. So chances are that if one of these signals fades, the other one will not fade at the same time. And again, this distance, this... Um, five to ten wavelengths, uh, you can still space the antennas apart like that, but you don't have to. The problem with, of course, with frequency diversity is you need two signals. It takes up twice as much spectrum space to transmit the signal as it would for just one signal. And moreover, the transmitter has to do it. So you can't take advantage of frequency diversity uh, mode unless the transmitter goes along with you. Whereas with spatial diversity, you can get away with just one transmitted signal and you can process everything at the receiving end. That is how diversity reception works. Nowadays, of course, in the with all of the microwave uh, radio and everything like that, there are other ways to obtain signal stabilization that resemble this. Um, but this is the old school diversity reception that you can still take advantage of if you have enough uh, real estate and you're into shortwave radio reception. Stan Gibalisco, Ham Radio Station, W1GV Whiskey One Golf Victor. The proprietor and operator and 
proud administrator of ham radio station Whiskey One Golf Victor W1GV. You'll find me doing Morse code at a wavelength of 20 meters or 14 megahertz technically on the amateur radio frequency spectrum. 73 best regards signing off from the Black Hills of South Dakota, United States of America.